Hello, dear listeners, and welcome to our podcast, Reading Books, discussing genres and favorite books. I'm Sophia. And I'm James. We're so excited to have you with us. Today, we're going to start our journey into the wonderful world of books. Whether you're an intermediate or elementary English learner, this podcast is for you. We will use simple words and clear sentences to help you understand. That's right, James. Reading is a fantastic way to improve your English. It helps you learn new words, understand different ways to form sentences, and see how native speakers use the language. Exactly, Sophia. And books can take you to different places and times. They can make you laugh, cry, and think deeply. Reading is like traveling with your mind. Today, we will start by talking about why reading is important and how you can get started with reading books in English. We'll also share some of our favorite books and why we love them. So let's begin with why reading is so important. Sophia, why do you think reading is good for us? Well, reading helps us learn new things. When we read, we see how words are used in different ways. This helps us understand the language better. Also, reading helps us improve our grammar. By seeing how sentences are structured, we learn to write better ourselves. Yes, and reading also helps us improve our speaking skills. When we read out loud, we practice pronunciation and fluency. It's a great way to practice English without needing a conversation partner. And let's not forget that reading can be a lot of fun. There are so many different types of books to read. You can read about adventures, mysteries, love stories, science fiction, and so much more. That brings us to our next topic: genres. A genre is a type of book. There are many genres to choose from. Sophia, what is your favorite genre? I love reading mysteries. Mysteries are books where there is a problem to solve, like a crime. The main character, often a detective, tries to find out what happened. It's exciting to try to solve the mystery along with the character. Mysteries are great. I like science fiction. Science fiction books are about things that might happen in the future or on other planets. They often have advanced technology and explore big ideas. It's fascinating to think about what our world could be like. Science fiction is very interesting for those who are just starting to read in English. It's a good idea to choose a genre you really enjoy. This will keep you motivated to keep reading. Yes, and start with simple books. There are many books written especially for English learners. These books use easier words and shorter sentences. As you get better, you can try more difficult books. Another tip is to read books you already know in your own language. For example, if you've read Harry Potter in your language, try reading it in English. You already know the story, so it will be easier to understand. That's a great idea. Also, don't worry if you don't understand every word. Try to understand the main idea of the sentence or paragraph. If you find a word you don't know, you can look it up, but don't let it stop you from enjoying the story. And remember, it's okay to read slowly. Take your time to understand what you are reading. The more you read, the better you will get. Let's share some of our favorite books now. Sophia, what is one of your favorite books? One of my favorite books is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. It's a story about a young girl named Scout and her brother Yum. They learn about kindness and fairness from their father, Atticus Finch. It's a beautiful and powerful story. That's a wonderful book. One of my favorites is 1984 by George Orwell. It's a science fiction book that talks about a future where the government controls everything. It makes you think a lot about freedom and privacy. We will talk more about different genres and our favorite books. We talked about why reading is important and shared some of our favorite books. And now we're going to dive deeper into different book genres and recommend some great books for you to read. That's right, James. There are so many genres out there, and each one offers something unique. Let's start with one of the most popular genres: fiction. Fiction books are stories that come from the author's imagination. 
They are not real, but they can feel very real. Fiction is a broad genre with many subgenres. Let's talk about some of them. First, we have adventure. Adventure books are exciting and often involve a journey or quest. The characters face challenges and dangers, and they usually have to be brave and clever. Adventure books are great for readers who love excitement and action. A classic adventure book is Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. It's about a young boy named Jim Hawkins who finds a treasure map and goes on a dangerous journey to find the treasure. Another subgenre of fiction is fantasy. Fantasy books have magical elements and often take place in imaginary worlds. They have creatures like dragons, wizards, and elves. A very popular fantasy book is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. It's the first book in the Harry Potter series and tells the story of a young boy who discovers he is a wizard. Fantasy books are perfect for readers who love magic and wonder. Another great fantasy book is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. It's about a hobbit named Bilbo Baggins who goes on an adventure with a group of dwarves to reclaim their treasure from a dragon. Moving on, we have the genre of romance. Romance books focus on love and relationships. They often have happy endings and make you feel warm and happy. A famous romance book is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. It's about the love story between Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy. Romance books are great for readers who enjoy stories about love and emotions. Another wonderful romance book is The Notebook by Nicholas Sparks. It's a touching story about a couple who fall in love when they are young and their journey through life together. Now, let's talk about mystery. Mystery books are all about solving a puzzle or a crime. The main character is usually a detective or someone who likes to solve problems. A classic mystery book is The Hound of the Baskervilles by Arthur Conan Doyle. It's one of the famous Sherlock Holmes stories. Mystery books are perfect for readers who like to think and figure out clues. Another great mystery book is And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. It's about 10 strangers who are invited to a remote island, and they start to get killed one by one. The characters must figure out who the killer is before it's too late. Another exciting genre is science fiction. Science fiction, or sci-fi, explores futuristic and imaginative concepts. It often includes advanced technology, space travel, and sometimes aliens. A classic sci-fi book is The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. It's about an alien invasion on Earth. Sci-fi books are fantastic for readers who love to imagine the future and other worlds. Another great sci-fi book is Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. It's about a young boy named Ender who is trained to be a leader in a war against aliens. We also have the genre of historical fiction. Historical fiction books are set in the past and often include real events and people from history. They make history come alive through interesting stories. A popular historical fiction book is the book Thief by Marcus Zusik. It's set during World War II and tells the story of a young girl named Liesel who steals books and shares them with others. Historical fiction is great for readers who want to learn about history in an engaging way. Another wonderful historical fiction book is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. It's about a blind French girl and a German boy whose paths cross during the war. Let's not forget about nonfiction. Nonfiction books are based on real facts and information. They can be about history, science, biographies, and much more. A popular nonfiction book is Sapiens, a brief history of humankind by Yuval Noah Harari. It explores the history of humans from the beginning to the present. Nonfiction is perfect for readers who want to learn new things and gain knowledge. Another great nonfiction book is Educated by Tara Westover. It's a memoir about a woman who grows up in a strict and abusive household in rural Idaho but eventually escapes to learn about the wider world through education. Those are some of the main genres and a few recommendations to get you started. Remember, the best way to improve your English is to read books that you enjoy. 
Don't be afraid to try different genres to see what you like best. And don't forget to use tools to help you. You can use a dictionary to look up words you don't know. Some e-readers have built-in dictionaries and translation tools that can make reading easier. Also, try to set aside a little time each day to read. Even just 10 or 15 minutes a day can make a big difference. The more you read, the better you'll get. We will talk about how to choose the right book for your level and some tips for making reading more enjoyable and effective. We explored different genres and recommended some great books for you to read. And now, we're going to talk about how to choose the right book for your level and some tips for making your reading experience more enjoyable and effective. Choosing the right book is very important, especially if you're learning English. If the book is too difficult, you might get frustrated. If it's too easy, you might get bored. So, how do you find the right book for your level? One way to choose a book is to look at the vocabulary and sentence structure. If you can understand about 80% of the words on a page without using a dictionary, the book is probably a good level for you. You should be able to understand the main idea of the story without knowing every single word. Another way to choose a book is to consider your interests. Think about what topics or genres you enjoy. Are you interested in history, science, fantasy, or romance? Choosing a book that interests you will keep you motivated to read, even if it's challenging. You can also look for books that are written specifically for English learners. These books use simpler language and are designed to help you improve your English. Many publishers create graded readers, which are books written at different levels of difficulty. They are a great place to start. Yes, graded readers are wonderful. Another helpful tip is to read books that you are already familiar with. If you've read a book in your native language, try reading it in English. Since you already know the story, it will be easier to understand the English version. Don't forget about using technology to help you. There are many ebooks available that come with built-in dictionaries. This means you can look up words you don't know with just a click. Some ebooks also have audio versions, so you can listen as you read, which can help with pronunciation and understanding. Speaking of audio, audiobooks are another great resource. Listening to audiobooks while reading the text can help you understand the pronunciation and rhythm of English. It's like having a native speaker read the book to you. That's a great point, Sophia. Now, let's talk about some tips for making your reading more effective. One important tip is to set a regular reading schedule. Try to read at the same time each day. Even just 15 minutes a day can help you improve your English. Yes, consistency is key. Another tip is to create a comfortable reading environment. Find a quiet place where you can concentrate. Make sure you have good lighting and a comfortable chair. Having a pleasant reading space can make a big difference. While reading, try to engage with the text. This means thinking about what you're reading and asking yourself questions. For example, what do you think will happen next? Why did a character act a certain way? Engaging with the text helps you understand it better and makes reading more enjoyable. Taking notes is also very helpful. You can write down new words and their meanings, interesting phrases, and your thoughts about the story. Keeping a reading journal can help you remember what you've read and track your progress. Another effective strategy is to read out loud. This can help you practice pronunciation and improve your speaking skills. It also helps you to focus and understand the text better. If you feel shy about reading out loud, try doing it when you're alone. If you come across a difficult word or phrase, don't get discouraged. Try to understand the meaning from the context. Look at the words around it and think about the overall meaning of the sentence or paragraph. If you still don't understand, it's okay to look it up, but don't let it stop you from enjoying the story. It's also helpful to discuss what you're reading with others. If you have friends who are also learning English, you can form a reading group. You can talk about the book, share your thoughts, and help each other understand difficult parts. Yes, discussing books with others can make reading more fun and social, 
Another tip is to reread books. Reading a book a second or third time can help you understand it better and notice details you missed the first time. And don't forget to celebrate your progress. Learning a new language takes time and effort, so be proud of yourself for every book you finish. Keep track of the books you've read and reward yourself for your hard work. Let's recommend a few more books that are great for English learners. One book I recommend is Charlotte's Web by B. White. It's a beautiful story about a pig named Wilbur and his friendship with a spider named Charlotte. The language is simple and the story is very touching. That's a lovely book, Sophia. Another great book is The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. It's a short, poetic story about a young prince who travels from planet to planet. It's full of imagination and wisdom, and the language is accessible for learners. Those are both wonderful books. Another one I recommend is The House on Mango Street by Sandra Fismeros. It's a series of short stories about a young girl named Esperanza growing up in a Latino neighborhood in Chicago. The language is simple, and the stories are very meaningful. That's a great choice, Sophia. One more recommendation for me is Matilda by Roald Dahl. It's about a very smart girl named Matilda who loves to read and has special powers. The story is funny and inspiring, and the language is perfect for learners. Remember, the most important thing is to enjoy the process and have fun with it. Reading is a journey, and every book you read takes you one step further on that journey. We talked about choosing the right book and tips for effective reading. And now, we're going to focus on some common challenges you might face while reading in English and how to overcome them. That's right, James. Reading in a new language can be difficult, but with the right strategies, you can overcome these challenges and enjoy the process. Let's start with one of the most common challenges, difficult vocabulary. Yes, encountering new words can be frustrating. One strategy to deal with this is to use context clues. Look at the sentences around the difficult word. Often, the meaning of the word can be inferred from the surrounding text. For example, if you read, she felt elated after receiving the good news, you might guess that elated means very happy because of the context. That's a great tip, James. Another strategy is to keep a vocabulary journal. Write down new words you come across along with their meanings and example sentences. Reviewing your vocabulary journal regularly can help reinforce these new words in your memory. Absolutely! Using flashcards is another effective method. You can write the new word on one side of a card and its definition on the other side. Review your flashcards daily to help memorize the new vocabulary. There are also many apps available that can help you create and review digital flashcards. Another common challenge is understanding idiomatic expressions. Idioms are phrases where the meaning isn't obvious from the individual words. For example, it's raining cats and dogs means it's raining very heavily. Idioms can be confusing because they don't translate directly. Yes, idioms can be tricky. One way to learn them is to read and listen to a lot of English. Over time, you'll start to recognize common idioms and understand their meanings. You can also find books and websites dedicated to explaining idiomatic expressions. Another challenge is dealing with complex sentence structures. In English, sentences can be long and have many parts. If you find a sentence that's too complicated, try breaking it down into smaller parts. Look for the main subject and verb first, then add in the other details. That's a helpful strategy. You can also practice reading different types of texts, like news articles, short stories, and novels. This will expose you to a variety of sentence structures and help you become more comfortable with complex sentences. Sometimes, the challenge isn't just the words or sentences, but understanding the overall story or theme. If you're having trouble following the plot, try summarizing what you've read after each chapter. Write a few sentences about the main events and characters. This can help you keep track of the story. Yes, summarizing is a great technique. 
You can also discuss the book with a friend or join a reading group. Talking about the book with others can help you understand it better and see different perspectives. Another common issue is staying motivated. Learning a new language takes time and effort, and it's easy to get discouraged. To stay motivated, set small, achievable goals. For example, aim to read one chapter a day or learn five new words a week. Celebrate your progress, no matter how small. Setting goals is very important. You can also mix up your reading materials to keep things interesting. Read a variety of genres and types of texts, like novels, short stories, articles, and even comic books. This can make reading more enjoyable and less monotonous. Audiobooks and podcasts are also fantastic resources. Listening to the audio version while reading the text can help you with pronunciation and understanding. It's like having a native speaker read the book to you, which can make it easier to follow along. If you find reading a full-length novel too daunting, start with shorter texts. Short stories or articles can be a great way to practice your reading skills without feeling overwhelmed. As you get more comfortable, you can gradually move on to longer books. Yes, and don't be afraid to reread books. Reading a book more than once can help you understand it better and notice details you missed the first time. Each time you read, you'll find that you understand more and more. Another challenge learners face is finding time to read. Our lives can be very busy, but even short periods of reading can be beneficial. Try to incorporate reading into your daily routine. For example, you can read during your commute, before bed, or during lunch breaks. Making reading a habit is key. Set aside a specific time each day for reading. Even 10 to 15 minutes a day can make a big difference over time. Consistency is more important than reading for long periods. Let's also talk about the challenge of staying focused while reading. It's easy to get distracted, especially if you're reading in a language you're still learning. To stay focused, find a quiet place to read and eliminate distractions. Turn off your phone or any notifications that might interrupt you. Another tip is to set specific reading goals for each session. For example, decide to read a certain number of pages or for a specific amount of time. Having a clear goal can help you stay focused and motivated. If you're struggling with a particularly difficult book, try reading a summary or review of the book first. This can give you an overview of the plot and characters, making it easier to follow the story as you read. Yes, and don't be afraid to ask for help. If you're part of a reading group or class, ask your teacher or classmates for clarification on parts you don't understand. Online forums and discussion groups can also be great places to seek help and share ideas. Let's review some of the key points to overcome common challenges in reading English books. 1. Use context clues and keep a vocabulary journal for new words. 2. Learn idiomatic expressions through reading and listening. 3. Break down complex sentences and practice with different types of texts. 4. Summarize what you've read and discuss it with others. 5. Set small, achievable goals and celebrate your progress. 6. Incorporate reading into your daily routine and find a quiet place to read. 7. Use audiobooks and podcasts to aid your understanding. 8. Reread books to reinforce your understanding. 9. Stay focused by setting specific reading goals and eliminating distractions. 10. Ask for help when needed. We talked about overcoming common challenges in reading English books. And now, we're going to focus on how to make reading a lifelong habit and how to continue improving your English through reading. That's right, James. Making reading a lifelong habit is one of the best things you can do for your personal and language development. Let's start by discussing why it's important to make reading a habit and how it can benefit you in the long run. Reading regularly has countless benefits. It helps improve your vocabulary, comprehension, and writing skills. 
It also enhances your critical thinking and imagination. Additionally, reading can be a great way to relax and escape from the stresses of daily life. Yes, and reading can also keep your brain active and healthy. Studies have shown that regular reading can reduce the risk of cognitive decline as we age. It's a great way to keep your mind sharp and engaged. Now, let's talk about some strategies for making reading a lifelong habit. The first step is to set realistic goals. Start with small, achievable goals and gradually increase them as you become more comfortable with reading. For example, you could start by reading one chapter a day or one book a month. Setting goals is very important. Another strategy is to create a reading schedule. Choose a specific time each day to read, such as before bed or during your lunch break. Consistency is key to forming a habit, so try to read at the same time every day. Another tip is to make reading enjoyable. Choose books that interest you and that you look forward to reading. Don't force yourself to read something you don't enjoy just because you think you should. Reading should be a pleasure, not a chore. Absolutely, James. It's also helpful to create a comfortable reading environment. Find a quiet place where you can relax and focus. Make sure you have good lighting and a comfortable chair. Creating a pleasant reading space can make a big difference. Another strategy is to mix up your reading materials. Read a variety of genres and types of texts to keep things interesting. You can read novels, short stories, articles, poems, and even comic books. The more variety you have, the more enjoyable reading will be. Yes, and don't forget about audiobooks and podcasts. Listening to stories can be a great way to enjoy books while doing other activities, like commuting or exercising. Audiobooks can also help you improve your listening skills and pronunciation. Joining a book club or reading group is another great way to make reading a habit. Discussing books with others can make reading more social and enjoyable. It also gives you a sense of accountability and motivation to keep reading. If you don't have access to a local book club, there are many online book clubs and reading communities. You can join forums and social media groups where people discuss books and share recommendations. It's a great way to connect with other readers from around the world. Now, let's talk about how to continue improving your English through reading. One important tip is to challenge yourself with more difficult texts as you progress. Start with simpler books and gradually move on to more complex ones. This will help you expand your vocabulary and improve your comprehension skills. Another way to improve your English is to read books by different authors and from different cultures. This will expose you to a variety of writing styles and perspectives. It will also help you understand different cultural contexts and idiomatic expressions. Yes, and don't forget to practice active reading. This means engaging with the text by asking questions, making predictions, and summarizing what you've read. Active reading helps you understand and remember the material better. Keeping a reading journal is another effective strategy. Write down new words and their meanings, interesting phrases, and your thoughts about the book. Reflecting on what you've read can help reinforce your learning and track your progress. It's also helpful to set specific language learning goals related to reading. For example, you could aim to learn a certain number of new words from each book you read or focus on understanding specific grammar structures. Having clear goals can help you stay focused and motivated. Another tip is to use supplementary materials to support your reading. For example, you can find study guides, summaries, and analysis of books online. These resources can help you understand difficult texts and provide additional context. Yes, and don't be afraid to read books multiple times. Each time you read a book, you'll understand it better and notice new details. Rereading is a great way to reinforce your learning and deepen your understanding of the language. Practicing writing based on what you read is also very beneficial. Try writing summaries, reviews, or even creative pieces inspired by the books you read. 
Writing helps you practice using new vocabulary and grammar in context. Absolutely, Sophia. It's also important to celebrate your progress. Learning a new language takes time and effort, so be proud of yourself for every book you finish and every new word you learn. Keep track of your achievements and reward yourself for your hard work. Let's review some of the key points to make reading a lifelong habit and continue improving your English. 1. Set realistic and achievable reading goals. 2. Create a regular reading schedule and find a comfortable reading environment. 3. Choose books that interest you and mix up your reading materials. 4. Join book clubs or reading groups to make reading social and enjoyable. 5. Challenge yourself with more difficult texts as you progress. 6. Read books by different authors and from different cultures. 7. Practice active reading and keep a reading journal. 8. Set specific language learning goals related to reading. 9. Use supplementary materials to support your reading. 10. Practice writing based on what you read. 11. Celebrate your progress and achievements. We hope these tips help you make reading a lifelong habit and continue improving your English. Reading is a wonderful journey and we're glad to have shared this journey with you. Thank you for joining us in this series. We hope you found our discussions helpful and inspiring. Keep reading, keep learning, and enjoy the amazing world of books.